homies. It's been a long time in coming, but uh, we're gonna take the clothes off of this girl. Oh, blue balls, and uh, do that final boat walk through. We got bog hanging out in the sun. We're down in beautiful Florida, so I thought it'd be a perfect place to do. Oh, bell, bog wants a belly ropes. Belly ropes are good for bog, you know. We're gonna break this into two different videos. First video is the boat walk through. Gonna go through all the different specs of the boat, different things that I like, don't like, hate. Mm. And then we're gonna go through uh, what I think is really cool the way I have it set up. Um, I set up some awesome storage I got it laid out exactly how I want it. So we'll go through that in another video So hit that like and subscribe button. You want to see my boat? Yeah, you do. Yeah, I do too So let's start at the front. What I have here is I have too many graphs. So I have a three set of graphs. This is a precision sonar mount. It's the tri-graph mount. I'm gonna show you a real cool mod that I did on in a second. But I got three Lawrence HGS 12s. On one of them, I run my active target. That's forward-facing sonar, which I have on my Ghost right here. On the other one, I got this 360 cone transducer deal. And so basically what that does is it does structure scan, like side scan in that, but it allows me to do the Lowrance 360, like the circle deal on the Ghost when you hit this specific button. And then the other graph that I use is for, let's see, 2D and then mapping. So I got map 2D on one graph, active target forward facing, and then the 360 on the other. That's why I have three. So what I actually did on my tri-mount is I had to extend it so far over. I actually built little brackets to, um, to double support it and they, I got these little rubber gaskets. It's kind of a cool little deal. I made it from True Value, but it puts some extra support on that so you don't get any um, any extra flex or anything on that on that three mount graph because it's a lot of weight, dude. Power pull buttons right there. The one thing I have on all of these units, except one, is graph glass. So I put graph glass on every single one of these except this one because it was already broken, so I can't put it on there. But basically, it saved my butt a couple times. It does make your touch screen a little bit slower, but it's 100% worth it because it makes your pocket foot not an extra $3,000 lighter when you break a unit and they tell you they can't fix it. So graph glass, highly recommend graph glass on all your units, they're too expensive not to. But I do have a Lawrence Ghost, I'm running at 36 volts, I'm gonna show you the batteries and stuff in a minute. One custom thing I did is I had the guys at Cabela's put these boat buckles in so I can have my rod holders. Um, it comes with those little like rubbery, I don't know, like the, just those little rubbery straps. I don't like those, I don't think they hold very well. Um, these are retractable so they'll go away, they're not dangling all over the deck and that that's something that I actually like. Okay guys, I'm super lazy, I'm not taking this off for you, but I'll tell you about it. One factor that I really like about this boat is right under here, there that sounds hollow, under that windshield I have access to all the, um, the, the wires and all that stuff for my graphs and for that that electric panel that bus panel that's in there so you can get out there get in there without having to like reach all up under the console and that makes things a lot more accessible at the dash i have another precision sonar mount it's for my double acs live 12s i really like this thing like it's super flat and it screws into a plate right there so it's like it's super freaking solid, which is awesome. Um, I got blinker tilt trim right here. I also have a jack plate. I have a TH Marine jack plate, so I have one on each side. One is for tilt trim, one is for the jack plate. I got super basic live wall stuff. Um, I did not get any kind of fancy add-ins. One thing I will tell you, I'm not a huge fan of, of the touch switch kind of deal. One reason for that is when my fingers get wet, I, it has a little bit of trouble responding. Like you gotta like tap it like four or five times and th that's a little frustrating because I'll be like catch a fish and I wanna turn on the live wall so I can put them in the live wall for a second while I set up the camera to do the release shot. And it's like, you're like hitting the button like 26 times little frustrating but I'm sure that's something that'll change down the line I do have a hot foot on there you can see it right down in there as you guys can see blue balls is defined by the beautiful blue power poles on the back I didn't know if I would like the blue poles I love my power poles it's such an integral tool especially if you do some shallow water or some grass fishing so the power poles were like a no doubt on my end and especially two if if you get one you're kind of getting a taste of what, what heaven is like. If you get two, you're like, yeah, I'll never have like one or zero power poles ever again. You're locked into place. So I got the two blue ones. I didn't know if it'd be a like a little bit loud. I'm not a super loud person, I'm a little bit loud, but I'm not like crazy flamboyant like those guys with like crazy, you know, you, you know what I'm talking about, right? 
So I didn't know if I like it. They look really nice, dude. They match up the boat. The boat has that, it's one of the standard color schemes actually. It's that black, blue, and silver kind of color scheme with a little bit of um, silver flake into the gel coat. It, it looks really nice for, for a standard color scheme. With these boats, the, the biggest highlight is, is price point. It, it's a solid boat for a very, in today's bass boat market, affordable price point. On the back, I also have Mercury Pro XS 250. Um, I did, so this boat comes standard with a 225, I think, a 225 Pro XS, the, the four stroke. Um, I upgraded to the 250. This boat is 20 foot two. I have had it without going crazy with the jack plate and stuff like that up to 72 miles an hour and I think I can go a little bit faster than that. It's not so much that I'm a speed demon, but I think with the 250 you get better resale value and um, you also get a little bit better gas mileage. Like it's a 20 foot 2 boat with a 250, she's going to clip, but it's real easy to cruise as well. I have a custom, um, this is a transducer shield mount for my structure scan right there. Super duper solid. I absolutely love that thing. Ladder for when swimsuit girl comes out. Boop. I actually kind of like this. It's sort of simple, and sometimes they, they make the ladders way too complex, and they actually get really annoying. In the back is something that I am extremely proud of. Let me move this stuff around. So I have my Battleborn lithium batteries, right? So these are my trolling motor batteries right here. One, two, three, 36 volt array. They're lithium that I literally can fish for like two and a half, three days and, and not have to charge them. Beyond that, I really don't have to charge them very often because I have my power pole charge back there. So basically I'm charging off of my motor. It's like a way to create almost like a secondary alternator for, um, for the motor to charge your trolling motor batteries. So that is absolutely awesome. The other huge decision that I make, so I'm running the C-Clear power harness. You guys know my buddy Nathan Martin and C-Clear over there in Florence, Alabama. Um, I'm running that, makes my graph super clear. But what I'm doing beyond that is this guy. So I took a Battleborn lithium battery. You can see that's my cranking battery back there. And so that's running some, uh, my, none of my electronics, but some of my, all my boat stuff, my bilge pumps, all that jazz. But I took this guy and that is another 100, um, 100 mAh Battleborn lithium. And I run all my graphs off that. And I have the C-Clear harness on there. So I have a dedicated battery for graphs. I never have to worry about killing my, my cranking battery, running out of juice for the, for the graphs, things along those lines. When you start running three, four graphs, it's a lot of juice, dude, especially when you're talking about forward-facing sonar, absolutely drinks juice, like active target and that. Um, so I run, like, what is that, six batteries, one, two, three, four, five batteries, sorry. I run five batteries, one dedicated for sonar, one cranking battery, and three trolling batteries. This is a super cool feature of the boat. It actually has a net storage. I got the fray bill right there. Um, it straps down, and then there's a little kind of slot behind the passenger seat right there um, that you kind of like stuff the net in. It's super sweet. Um, the only problem is sometimes I, I don't unstrap, and so it's not ready, and then I hook a big fish, and then I'm SOL. You get the idea. This is a custom thing that I got. It's a little drawer kind of deal. Um, built onto the the uh, co-angler side right here. I like any kind of extra space I can get, and so I added that um, just so I have camera stuff. I got all kinds of rando stuff that I bring when I go to shoot the videos and stuff, so it, it's handy to me. Right next to there, the cooler is gigantic, and this is probably one of the things I like the most. It comes with a garbage can. Seems really stupid, but keeps your boat a lot cleaner because you go like this, and you're like, wow, that's junk, and you throw it in there. So it keeps your boat a lot cleaner. Cooler is gigantic though, holds a bunch of ice and actually keeps things cool longer than, than my Triton cooler. Another cool little feature is they have a little RAM mount mounted right under the console and um, you can just squeeze your phone in there. Not a big deal, but something kind of neat. So storage wise, you know, the boat's laid out pretty simply and I actually like that. I don't like those fancy, like non-intuitive kind of layouts. So basically I'm kind of a mess because I'm on the road, um, but it's got like a partition kind of storage system right there. You can kind of move it around, fits my Walmart look, um, my little closable boxes, my junk plastic boxes really well. Um, some spaces for some 3700 boxes and then each compartment has a little turn onable light right there You can see this one right here. Boom I Actually don't have the power on so it's not gonna be on but you can see I throw a bunch of stuff in there My active target is mounted up in the rod locker up in there and then I pulled out this is the the other rod locker I pulled out the rod storage Organizer because it limits how many rods you can put in and I just use the rod sleeves um, But it does have this thing in the back so you can 
you can still kind of organize a little bit, but I just lay them on the deck thing. I have multiple 7-Eleven rods in here, so there's a ton of space. And when I came down to Florida, I think I had something like 26 rods in there or something like that. So I had a lot of stuff in there. One thing I do not like, so this is the passenger or the coangler rod storage. It doesn't fit very well. Number one, I don't like having individual slots to put stuff because it's easier, like my Triton had like a little like open circle. So you could put two or three rods in each level. They do not totally fit very well, like wedged behind the seats. You have to kind of organize them and, and jangle them. It's just kind of, it's a hassle and I don't like hassle stuff. I'm hoping that's something that they will improve moving forward because it's a simple fix. All they need to do is change the way it lays out and change the angle a little bit. Glove compartment, wonder what's, oop, what's in there. Yeah, nice. Uh, one real cool thing actually about this is all these compartments in the back, they lift out. So even like my tackle ones, like if you guys are traveling, doing like tournament fishing and stuff. So basically, they're all um, they're all really straightforward. I can't do it with one hand, but you could bring stuff inside. You could kind of, you know, if you want to keep your stuff out of the boat for like theft reasons or something like that, you can take these bins out and actually drag them in the house. So kind of a cool little function. Plus gives you great access to the wiring down in there. Got the uh, the magic roll right there. And then the live wells. I've actually used the live wells a couple times because I've caught some big ones to um, to store fish in that. And they are pretty sweet. They're pretty gigantic. I had an eight pounder in there um, that I caught on Gunnersville. I'm working on catching some giants down here in Florida. Uh, but one cool feature that they have is they're kind of double ridged. So if you were to actually drive around with a bag of fish, it keeps them kind of contained because one of the problems that you have that hurts the fish is when they're sloshing all around in that. So between that edge that sticks out and then throwing in a few noodles in there and doing the noodle trick on the live well you can have your fish really well taken care of and protected plus i mounted one of these actually on my, my other boat but you get your call tag thing right there pretty cool you like the new boat i think you're a fan it's a little bit fast for you that's the one thing you don't like trailer wise i mean it's super standard D tandem trailer i can tell you i've driven it to florida twice without any issues um, and we're going to drive it up to Wisconsin, hopefully, to do some smallmouth fishing in fall. So that, uh, that, I'd say that's a decent test of the trailer. I love this boat. It's simple. It's greatly priced. Um, I laid it out exactly how I wanted it. I had a great sort of interaction relationship with my guys at Cabela's. Um, it, there's definitely maybe like a few like carpet edges and stuff where it, it, you know, it could have taken an extra second to glue it down correctly. But the one nice thing is any kind of issues that, that I run into, I'm literally going to go to Cabela's and they're going to get it straight. So having that relationship is pretty cool. And frankly, like the price point of these boats versus like a high-end premium boat, I will take a few carpet edges. Like I could care less, dude. Because really, in my personal opinion, any of you guys that message me know this, the things that are important on a boat are this, that, those, and then all the other stuff you use to fish with. Literally, the boat is a placeholder. Like, it's a placeholder for all those things. So, I don't need fancy. I don't need perfect. I need to get the job done. I'll leave you with two things. One, we are going to do an interior kind of breakdown of how I have my, my gear all laid out. So, stay tuned for that video. And two, how much do I like this boat? I like this boat enough where I think I might get another one next year. Uh, there's a few little tweaks. I kind of want to do like a custom color thing. I'm not 100% sure. There's a few little tweaks that I want to do and especially like a custom color. So drop down in the comments box if you don't get any questions. What custom color, if I do get another nitro, what custom color scheme should I do? I got a few that I saw on the internet that are, that are pretty badass. So we'll see if uh, what you guys are thinking matches up what I'm thinking. But hit that like and subscribe button. Thank you guys for coming along with me. We'll see you back out on the water or uh, talking fishing from the garage. Later.